gonna do a facelift uh, with the monos. If you want, I can use barbs as well, but we will see with the patient what she feels like also. And how old are you? 40. 40. Uh, she's 40 years old. Then you have a bit of sagging skin, um, which you can like feel here. And uh, right now, what we have prepared the patient with the uh, EMLA, a lot of it, for approximately one hour, and then put plastic, uh, it creates like a double effect of the EMLA. So we're just gonna remove it and clean up and then uh, start. And a bit of alcohol. Okay. So first I'll draw. Uh, on the face, where, how I want it, and uh, where I'm gonna put the uh, threads. So, uh, let's start with the right side. I usually put two threads in this kind of manner, uh, vertically, uh, to actually lift this uh, and this place. You can actually use barbs here uh, from nasolabial fold to upper part of the ear and lateral uh, line of the eye. And then so, uh, usually you can use a barb here as well going down to uh, the jawline. But today we're gonna use the monos here. So, two threads here, a couple of threads uh, horizontally, putting them in this kind of way. And then also, to give the contour to the cheeks, I put some threads here. And you can go further up, very like superficial then, to do the tear trough. And then to stabilize these um, threads, you have to put some vertically too, to create like a mesh. So this creates a mesh here, and it gives a perfect result uh, and collagen production. Same thing on the other side. And always, you have to remember, you want to keep the V form of the face. So you have to go up with the threads. So this is uh, what we will do, and then uh, some tear trough, very, like you have to be very gentle here, uh, approximately five millimeters from uh, the eyelid. I'm not going to show you a complete tear trough, just a preview of it. So we'll start with the right side then. I will keep uh, some of the markings still here. So, and now I will use, uh, can I have the orange ones? Yeah. So, um, Great ones. Um, 
I'm going to use the 25 for this part over here. These are 25 and nine, 90 millimeters. They're a bit big, but um, that doesn't matter actually. So I will start a bit from lower part here so they will fit in. And this can be a bit more painful for the patient, but uh, she probably or hopefully she won't feel anything. And just tell me if you feel anything, okay? okay. And you want me to stop. So what you have to do is not go directly uh, through the skin like this. You have to keep an angle of uh, approximately 45 degrees first and stretch the skin. So now it's in. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. And we can have a new one for this. So here I used one uh, of the 25. It was uh, pretty easy to just go through. And she didn't feel much at all. No, not really. Okay. And then I'm going to use one more uh, for the other one uh, going from inferior to superior. And then you have to remember to keep the angle. And how do you know if you're in the perfect place? You just lift the needle a bit, and then you can see it. If you can, uh, maybe the patient has to uh, not that thick skin, or maybe it's uh, a bit deep. This is like a perfect location. So, so far, so good. Great. And uh, now we have these uh, two 25 over here. So I'll start with the uh, horizontal ones or going up uh, with the 27 ones. And then I measure from here. I put one and keep the angle. and it's in. We'll keep it here for a while. Then I do the same over here. Any questions so far? No? <laughs> and you have to remember to keep the angle when you're putting the thread in or the needle in 
because if you go directly like this, sometimes after a while, uh, some weeks, you can see <laughs> some patients can feel the thread coming out, and then uh, then you haven't gone and like gone through the skin with the right angle from the start. So to avoid that, just keep the angle of 45 degrees. Has anyone here been using uh, these uh, 27s on the face or just the 29s? No, I usually use 27s. Usually 27s, yeah. Yeah, it gives... Uh, I think the, the result is better. The result is much better. Yeah, and you... Yeah, and also you have to use less threads then. Uh, to create the same result with the 29s, you have to use a more, more threads. Okay, so now we have those uh, horizontal ones going horizontally and upwards. So I'm going to remove them and then uh, stabilize them with the, um, either you can do the same ones, the 27 ones, or uh, the 29 ones. Today we'll use the 29. Okay, now the 29 ones, and uh, these are much smaller. Gives a really nice collagenic effect later. So we have to stabilize the um, 27s. Much easier to put in than the other ones, but I personally like the 27 more.
And what you also can do with the soft lift with the needles, and I like it very much, I prefer to do it sometimes, is that you can bend the needle uh, in this kind of way with the lid. And it makes it a bit easier sometimes to put uh, the thread in different places. And this can be very effective, especially for the upper lip. I will show you that later. So like this. And that you can't do with all kind of uh, needles and threads. The more threads, the better the result. Yes? I understand you're trying to place them subcutaneously, yes? Yeah. You did mention how it Or subdermally. Subdermally. In the first part of your presentation, you did mention, however, that sometimes you try to get intradermally in some areas of the face. In which areas of the face? I will show you. It's actually up here uh, for the tear trough. For the tear trough? Yeah, the skin is much, thinner. much thinner and more fragile, so uh, over here you put it like more superficially. Superficially, but then uh, I, I imagine that the risk of uh, the thread showing up. Not with the 29s, they are so, so thin, so they won't show. And uh, for the two weeks, <coughs> approximately 80% of the threads are absorbed. <coughs> yeah. So these are like really, really small and thin threads for the 29s. Are you okay here? And before a thread lift, I actually recommend that you always have a consultation with your patient before. Uh, with like what kind of medication is she taking, what kind of any diseases from before or not. Uh, also NSAIDs uh, causes bleeding, increases the bleeding. So don't use that before such a procedure. But I think you already know that. And then something else, please. Yeah? You, you said that these threads are absorbed after two weeks. 80% of them. Really? The PDS the sutures. I think they're absorbed after three months or so. Yeah, completely absorbed. <coughs> but the, 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 the sutures, the, the stitches, I think they're absorbed after <coughs> three, four months. Isn't it the same material with the, with the stitches? It's the same material. Why are they absorbed so fast? 80% only. So the process is for the first two weeks, the 80% are not completely absorbed, but the process of 80% is within the two weeks. And then everything is absorbed after four months or six months. This neocollagen no, no formation is based on the presence of those in the body, right? After they're absorbed, and no after. formation. And after, 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 after as well. Absorbed, why is there no collagen? Because it creates uh, a process in the, where the threads have been. So, yeah, exactly. So even if the threads are not there, the process is still going on. That's why you get the result for sometimes 12 months and even 24 months. 
So even though the completely the um, threads are absorbed, there's still a process going on. But 80% is absorbed two weeks, and then the rest three months. Yeah. There is 80% of it. Is yeah. Gone. So now we've done this part. Uh, I'm going to show you the marionettes, which are very good, like uh, for elderly people. When you have this, you can do with fillers too. But with threads, it gives a long-lasting effect.